Can you see PPT? Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes, sir. And can you see my PPT? Yes, sir. I think uh, some uh, lecture is going on still, or what? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, any previous session is going on? Okay. Fine. Uh, today we'll be starting uh, unit number two, unit two. The title of unit two is foreign exchange market. Foreign exchange market. Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, yes. okay. And you can see my PPT also, no? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's uh, begin with uh, unit number two. And the title is foreign exchange market. Now here, if you observe the uh, title of uh, unit two, you will see there are three words foreign, which is other than our home country. So rest of the world is foreign. And exchange. Exchange is nothing but buying and selling of a foreign currency. Either there may be buying or there may be selling of a currency. That is known as exchange. And market, we all are aware what is market. So market, it is a place where the buying and transaction of currency, transaction take place. That is known as market. Now, in order to understand in detail in regards to foreign exchange market. Let me start with the uh, meaning itself. Foreign exchange uh, market structure. Now this is the subtopic of our unit number two, foreign exchange market structure. So today we will be trying to understand the market structure of foreign exchange, how it is. Now, the currency market where money denominated in one currency is bought and sold with money denominated in another currency. So either there will be buying of currency or there will be selling of currency. So this kind of transaction take place in a currency market. That is basically known as currency market. In currency market, only and only the currency is being traded, either our home currency or foreign currency. And uh, international trade and capital transaction. Now, what is this? which facilitated with the ability to transfer purchasing power between countries. So that shows the purchasing power between countries. Now, if you're talking about at international level, 
particularly uh, developed countries they are having a good amount of purchasing power they have good amount of purchasing power Na, nothing to explain in regards to the uh, developed countries don't you don't you think so they have good purchasing power developed countries particularly european countries america do they have purchasing power or not yes country like america european countries do they have good amount of purchasing power or not are you agree with this yes please hello am i audible hello hello i am uh, sharing with you my explanation that uh, country like america and uh, developed uh, countries in europe they do have good amount of purchasing power so are are we agree with this or not do they have good amount of purchasing power or not or they do not have purchasing power what do you think i am waiting for this response hello what do you think do they have good purchasing power or not yes please Yes, am I audible or not? I am not getting any response from your side. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, waiting response from your side. अक्षता कैन यू हेयर मी अक्षता 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 दौनकर कैन यू हेयर मी यस अक्षता can you hear me akshata am i audible tak kanna phone lao ba i 
Am I audible, Akshata? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was uh, sharing with you the uh, thought that in regards to the purchasing power. Now, country like America and uh, developed uh, nations, in uh, particularly in European uh, continent, do they have good amount of purchasing power or not? What do you think? Yes, sir. They have yes. good amount of purchasing power. Now, yes. <coughs> at the international level, what is their problem? Do you know? Their problem is uh, consumption capacity. Consumption. Because uh, if you compare uh, their population, particularly in Germany, which, which is the country of... Uh, or country belongs to the develop uh, develop one, but they do not have uh, much population which can consume uh, more things. They have good amount of money. They they have good amount of purchasing power, but the consumption power is not so far as compared to other countries. And if you compare developed countries, country like uh, developing like a uh, yeah, India and uh, Pakistan. So our consumption rate is much, much higher than these European countries. But uh, somewhere we cannot, we do not have that purchasing power where we can purchase more commodity at an international level. Means we do not import much things from foreign because of a uh, lot of restrictions our government has put up and again we do not have that much money to import from the foreign countries because it is costlier and purposely the, uh, our government has made these things co costlier so that people should uh, buy more of uh, making india goods rather than foreign things, rather than import. Now, in regards to the uh, this uh, international, uh, uh, this currency market, it is <coughs> being done through OTC. What is this OTC? Any, anyone knows? What do you mean by OTC? Yes, long form of OTC. Anybody knows? Anybody knows? Okay, if not aware, OTC means over trade counter. O stands for over, T for trade, C for counter. Over <coughs> trade counter type means this uh, entire currency market at for. Uh, international level it is being taken at over trade counter and uh, it means there is no any geographical location like in regards to the shares in regards to the equity uh, we have stock exchange uh, bombay stock exchange and so on in regards to the uh, international level new york new york stock exchange so these stock exchanges are exist but if you are dealing with foreign currency uh, there is no specific location this entire uh, uh, transactions being taken place through telephone and electronic devices. So mostly telephone lines and electronic devices are being used. Earlier, telephone lines were used. Now, telephone plus uh, uh, electronic device, like say laptop and computer through internet, the transactions are being taken place. So there is no specific location. That is why most trade by phone and telex, that is fax, Nowadays, fax is also outdated. So, phone and through email, the transactions are being taken place. One more feature of this foreign exchange market is uh, uh, regarding time. So, as such, uh, this market continues for 24 hours. Now, you will be wondering, sir, how it is for 24 hours? Uh, a person who is dealing in market, he has to have a rest for uh, at least seven, eight hours out of 24 hours. So you might be having that doubt. 
Now, in order to clear this doubt, why this market is 24 hours? Now see, right now, now in our India, now it is uh, 7 past 15 minutes. But that doesn't mean that our offices are closed or now we are going to close, maybe after half an hour or one hour, the offices will be closed. But the office which is located in New York or maybe in Canada, so they also have night time now. Do they have night time? Can you answer me? Canada, New York, they do have now evening time, 7 past 15 minutes. Hello? Panchakadapanata Sandhagaj Savasa Pajatka? Nice, sir. Mahin. So that is happening in India, but not in foreign countries. Particularly in Canada, their time might be in morning time, maybe afternoon time. If you uh, observe their watch, so you will see the different timings are there. So they have just started their uh, office now, particularly in Canada now. Uh, New York, New York might be, it is now afternoon time. So they are now at the peak, uh, peak time. So my point is here, uh, this foreign exchange market continues 24 hours. And that is why the exchange rate is having a lot of volatility. A lot of uh, fluctuations are there. As the transaction increases and accordingly, the volatility take place. So this is also another uh, third feature of a foreign exchange market. That is uh, time. So 24 hours this market uh, works. Except, uh, do you know, except two days, Saturday and Sunday. Mostly on Saturday, Sunday, at world level, the transactions are almost closed, except a uh, few countries. Except few countries, but most of the developed countries, they are closed on Saturday and Sunday. Yes, sir. So the, this is the only exception thing that Saturday, Sunday, they are closed. But if you observe Monday to Friday, this market continues 24 hours. So this is the one of the feature in regards to this market structure. So if you are dealing with the foreign exchange market, you have to have an alert team uh, which takes feedback and uh, which, uh, which is cope up with outside environment uh, for 24 hours. So there, there will be shift. One person cannot work for 20, 24 hours. That is also true. But you have to have a team. If you are into this uh, foreign exchange market, then uh, you have to develop a team. A particular team uh, will be working for uh, morning hours, then uh, afternoon hours, and then night hours. And then uh, whatever information is there, that information they will collect and uh, it will be analyzed by uh, your office. Now, next is, uh, let me tell you. Uh, now, this is the report of uh, Bank for International Settlement. Can you see my PPT? BIS, can you see this PPT? Yes, sir. Now this is a BIS report. BIS stands for Bank for International Settlement. Bank for International Settlement. Now this International Settlement Bank has conducted survey, I think uh, two years back, and uh, they have communicated through, through this survey that how this foreign exchange market has occupied with the uh, transaction transactions. So just observe these two columns. The first column is currency and the second column is uh, transaction in percentage. So here, uh, let me share with you the fact that uh, US dollar and Euro, uh, they, 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 these are the pair of currency. Now here, there are two currencies, US dollar and Euro. Now. Uh, look at my cursor. Now, which are the currencies are involved in this pair? Look at my cursor. Can you tell me which are the two currencies involved in this? Yes, please. 
US and Australian dollar. Yes, US and Australian dollar. So this uh, BIS conducted survey and they found that US dollar and Euro, uh, these uh, pair almost having 32% currency out of this 100% for foreign market. 100% is foreign market. Out of 100%, the highest goes with US dollar and Euro, 32%. Just imagine. Then US dollar with uh, Swiss franc having 5% uh, transaction at international level. Then US dollar, uh, Japan yen. Yen is the currency of Japan. It is having almost 19% uh, transaction. Then US dollar with pound having 15% transaction. US dollar and Canadian dollar having 5%. US dollar and Australian dollar having 6% transaction. And US dollar and the rest of the countries, that is all other countries, having 18% transaction. So this is the transaction uh, rate I, I would like to share with you out of this 100% foreign exchange market. So the highest, uh, without saying, it is uh, with the US dollar and Euro, 32%. Now this is about the other countries. Now, you might be curious, the, sir, what about our our country with other countries, means our rupee uh, with other uh, currencies. Are you not curious about to know this? Are you curious or not to know about uh, our Indian currency is ru rupaya, rupees. Uh, rupees with other countries so let me share with you, the, uh, this is the BIS report again, in the same year, Bank International Settlement, Bank International, BIS stands for Bank International Settlement. Please uh, remember this because may, maybe in multiple choice of question, you may be asked the long form of uh, BIS, okay? So what is the long form of BIS? Yes, please. What is the long form of BIS? Yes, can you answer? Long form of BIS, abbreviation of BIS. Hello? Bank International Settlement. Yes, Bank International Settlement. Now this Bank International Settlement has given one more uh, uh, feedback about rupee and foreign currency. Now, in regards to the rupee and US dollar, it has almost 96% transaction out of 100, 96. Then remaining that is uh, rupees uh, with Euro, it is hardly 0.85. So even not it is 1%, less than 1%. Then uh, rupees with N, it is 2%. Rupees with pound, 1%. And uh, rupees with with all other countries like say Thaibat and other countries, it is 0.15%. So this way, if you analyze this 100%, so the highest portion, it is with which, which, which country? Highest portion? Indian rupee is dealing with uh, which country? Which country we have highest transaction? United States, US, and it is with dollar. So that is 96%. Now after understanding this uh, uh, rupee and foreign currency as well, uh, currency with uh, other uh, country that is uh, Swiss franc and AM pound, etc. So after understanding, uh, knowing this, let me, uh, this slide uh, we have discussed, where money denominated in one currency is bought and sold with money denominated in other currency is known as currency market. So again, uh, from the point of view MCQ, you might be uh, given this line and you will be asked that it is known as what? It is known as what? And then 
there will be uh, several options will be given several options means four options will be given out of these four you will have to pick up the correct one that is currency market it is known as currency market so this way you need to prepare a mcq or maybe uh, if it is a offline exam then uh, you may be asked that define the term mar uh, currency market so while defining currency market remember this uh, sentence now this uh, foreign currency market uh, which which is not having uh, say physical location it is having uh, electronic location like there is no specific location uh, electric location means uh, mostly it is uh, done by phone and telex so these two major instruments are used in foreign exchange market mostly phone mobile and uh, telephone lines are being used and as i told this market continues 24 hours except saturday and sunday uh, business working days are monday to friday and monday to friday it works 24 hours now let us know about this slide structure of foreign exchange market can you view this uh, ppt are you able to see this ppt yes sir now uh, just have a look and then i will explain each and every word of this uh, ppt what it is now let me share with you what this uh, ppt is this ppt talks about the uh, structure now the structure that there are main four pillars are there there are four pillars the first pillar is a uh, retail market so there is a retail market now let me give you the example what is this retail market suppose now if you are thinking to visit uh, say thailand as a tourist or if you are thinking to visit uh, switzerland as a to uh, tourist you are going as a tourist so being a tourist he will prefer to carry traveler check there is a facility traveler check so that traveler check can be in cash in their currency suppose if you are going for thailand or malaysia so while uh, visiting uh, thailand or malaysia uh, when you travel from india to say malaysia then he will ask your bank maybe uh, state bank of india then state bank of india will provide the facility which is known as traveler check so most of the tourist they carry traveler check when they visit foreign countries so when traveler checks are in cash in their own currency that is known as retail market that is known as retail market so if you are asked a theory question uh, discuss the structure of foreign exchange market please do remember Uh, this particular uh, slide and uh, whatever we are discussing uh, you will have to mention in your answer and if possible uh, take a screenshot of this uh, ppt take screen screenshot now how do you access uh, the ppt uh, which i am sharing with you is there any facility from institute do, uh, do they share uh, ppt with you yes please do institute share ppt with you hello yeah ji me tumhala ppt dakhavto ya ppt tumhala share karta ka institute share karta ka tumhala tumcha barobar no no and uh, uh, what about uh, the institute website do they upload this uh, ppt on their website ka tumhala mahit nahi ajun no sir we don't check the website okay we don't check website but uh, right now you are having your either cell phone or laptop ja padatre tumhi now you are attending a session but uh, you can have a screenshot that is possible no yes sir so uh, follow that practice whenever uh, i am sharing with you ppt you can take just a screenshot of this uh, ppt and uh, please remember what we are discussing in the session now i gave you the example of retail market the example is traveler check 
and traveler check, which is generally used by tourist. Uh, not Indian uh, visits uh, Thailand or Malaysia, but sometimes maybe Australian uh, see, uh, can visit India to see Taj Mahal or uh, for any other purpose. So even the uh, Australian person can carry traveler check and he can withdraw uh, in India. So that transaction, whenever uh, we complete, that is the example of retail market. Then the second pillar of uh, this structure is wholesale, wholesale market. Wholesale market is also known as interbank market. There is another word, uh, if you read International Financial uh, Management book uh, written by P.G. Apte, author name is P.G. Apte. Uh, he has mentioned in his book that uh, wholesale market is also known as interbank market, interbank market. Now, the word itself uh, speaks, it is uh, exactly opposite to the retail market. In wholesale market, mostly uh, big financial institutions, uh, commercial uh, banks and central banks. Now from India, our central bank is Reserve Bank of India. So they are the main players into this uh, wholesale mar market or interbank market. And commercial bank like say HDFC, ICICI, they are also the major player of this wholesale bank. Now what they do? Now suppose if a foreigner, if they would like to invest in India or a Indian would like to invest in the form of ADR and GDR, American Deposit Receipts and Global Deposit Receipts. So such ADR and GDR are the example of wholesale market or interbank market. Please do remember this, okay? Now the third pillar is primary price makers. Can you see this word? Can you able to read this? Primary price maker. Yes, please. What is next to this primary price maker? What is next word? What is the next word after primary price maker? Professional dealers. Yeah, professional dealer. So primary price makers are also known as professional dealer. Now, who are they? they? They are the mediator in this foreign exchange market. And what they do? Uh, they deal with a two-way market. Now, what is two-way market? Uh, this professional dealer, they buy foreign currency as well as they sell foreign currency. currency. So that is known as two-way market. They buy as well as they purchase foreign currency. That is known as two-way market. That is why they are called as a mediator. Mediator. They are known as mediator, primary price maker or professional dealer. And let me tell you, this professional dealer, uh, they get uh, every minute feedback update from the foreign exchange market. In fact, they have to be update with this market and then only they can deal with the foreign exchange market and their uh, business is two-way market. Now suppose, uh, take example myself. Now, if I would have to visit say Germany, so naturally I need foreign currency. Okay. Now, while visiting Germany, so I will deposit Indian currency and I will exchange Indian currency with the foreign currency. Vice versa. Suppose if a Japanese guy visiting India, so Japanese guy will sell his yen and will purchase rupaya. So this gentleman that is professional dealer they buy uh, AN currency as well as they sell uh, rupiah currency. That way it is known as two-way market. Are you getting my explanation? Have you followed? Have you understood? 
Yes, did you understand this explanation? Samaj laga? Yes, please. Samaj laga? Did you understand the example? Primary price maker or professional dealer, their job is to sell as well as purchase of foreign currency, buying and selling of foreign currency. Now, the fourth pillar in, in this structure is a price taker. Now, uh, price taker, who are the price taker? A person, an organization who is in need of currency. They are known as price taker. Means they are in need of either foreign currency or I, I, I mean to say they need foreign currency. They are known as a person who needs foreign currency. They comes to this category that is price takers, and who deals in foreign currency, who sells and buys. They are known as price maker, primary price maker. They are price maker, our professional dealer. And at a large level, who deals, they are known as interbank market or wholesale, and. Transaction uh, which pertains to the tourist, it is known as retail market. So this way, the entire structure of foreign exchange market can be explained with these four pillar. Again, I repeat, there are four pillar: retail market, then wholesale market, then uh, professional dealer, and price takers. Just remember these four person. May I go to next slide now? May I go to next slide? Yes, please. May I go to next slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this next slide is speaks about participants in the foreign exchange market. Who are the participants in the foreign exchange market? Now, participants at two levels. Just now we have discussed that is retail and wholesale. So, wholesale level, <coughs> mostly it is 95% occupied by major banks. Now, who are the major banks? Central Bank of India, that is Reserve Bank of India, and uh, even uh, private bank like HDFC, ICICI, they are also the major banks in uh, regards to this 95 percent then uh, retail level as i told you the tourist that is business customers uh, the, and uh, tourist and business customer falls under this retail level category okay then two type of currency market basically currency market it is of two type one is a spot market now this spot market name itself in a spot on the spot that is why immediate transaction the transaction take place immediately. That is why it is known as spot market. And recorded by second business day. Suppose if you have done a transaction today, today is say, say Friday. So next day on Saturday, the transaction will be recorded. Now suppose if you have done your transaction on Thursday, on Friday morning, the transaction will be completed. But if you have done transaction on say Friday evening, then uh, maybe uh, because of time gap, uh, Saturday, since it is uh, off day, then uh, this transition will be completed on Monday. Are you getting my point? If you are doing your transition on sp in the spot market late evening, then this transition may not reflect on the next day immediate because of Saturday, Sunday, the transitions are closed. 
So this transaction will be reflected on Monday. So this is about spot market. Second one is forward market. Now forward market means today you are dealing, but transaction will be on a future date. That is why it is known as forward market. Forward. Today you are dealing with the transaction, but the completion will be done uh, on a future date. Maybe three days later or six days later, maybe 30 days later, whatever it is. So that is why forward market transaction take place at a specified future date. You will have to specify the future date. Now suppose today is a 11th of February, 11th February. So if you have decided on 2nd second March, so on 2nd March, the transaction will take place that is known as forward market. So the foreign exchange mark, uh, market, spot market and foreign market. These are the two currency market. Then participants by market. In spot market, again, uh, there are three uh, participants in spot market, commercial bank, brokers, customers like you and me, customers of commercial and central banks. So they are the participants. In regards to the foreign market, who are the participants? Arbitrage, arbitragers, traders, hedgers, and speculators. Now, arbitragers, uh, there is uh, one of the group of arbitragers, their job is to arbitrage. That it means there is a continuous selling and buying that, that they are known as the arbitragers. Their job is to continuous either sell or buy foreign currency. They are called as a arbitragers. Some of the arbitrages are the some of the, what do you mean by arbitrages? Who are involved into the continuous selling and buying of foreign currency. They are known as arbitrages. Some of the arbitrages are the, hello? And then, yes, sir. and then second one is trader. Now trader, the name itself indicates who are into the business of uh, foreign currency. They are known as a trader. Actually not a, a foreign currency, uh, who are into the business and they are either importing or exporting material. So uh, whenever they import material, so foreign currency is required. If he export is there, then they will be receiving foreign currency from outside. That's a different story. So they are the traders. Now hedgers. Hedgers, they are the persons who are having strategy of hedging foreign currency. Means to hedge. Means uh, they minimize the risk of foreign currency. Minimizing risk. They are called as a hedger. Hedger is the kamka yasta to minimize the risk of foreign currency. Karana, Mithwana Sahih, the foreign currency, there is a lot of volatility, a lot of uh, fluctuation take place in foreign currency. It goes down, sometimes it goes up and continuously uh, going up. Now, if it is going up, then there, there could be a loss. Now, to minimize this loss or to avoid this loss, then uh, they are, there are the hedges who guide to this uh, people and they charge commission for that. They are called the hedges. Then uh, speculators. Speculator, this is the uh, different kind of uh, category. Their job is to have a speculation. Means it is a eth ethical speculation, not unethical speculation, ethical speculation. So they have uh, observation. They have good amount of study of economics, international uh, affairs, then political affairs, and so on. With this uh, experience and uh, study, they deal in the market. They are called as the speculators. Then uh, next slide. Now, spot quotation. Now, what they, what is this spot quotation? Now, for spot quotation, uh, the sources are all major newspapers. If you are talking about India, the major newspapers are Times of India, Financial Express, Economic Times. These are the major newspaper where uh, you get information about uh, foreign exchange market. 
remember this uh, mainly two papers economic times of india times of india and economic times uh, these are main two papers where uh, you will get the information about foreign currency so major newspaper all major newspaper uh, not in uh, sakal or pudari uh, or lokmat so these are not uh, major newspaper in, uh, if you are talking about uh, foreign currency foreign currency market we in india we have only two major paper uh, which are those two major paper economic economic time and times, times of, india. of india yes and times of india these are the two major newspaper where the authenticate uh, information is available other paper uh, no one can uh, give guarantee whether it is authenticate or fake and uh, major currencies have four different codes in uh, spot quotation almost major currencies now major currencies like say dollar pound euro yeah, these are generally major currencies they have four different uh, codes the spot price this is one then 30 days price 90 days and 180 days so these codes uh, even if you uh, visit uh, uh, websites same information you will get for uh, spot spot quotations 90 days, 180 days spot price. And then accordingly, you can deal with this. Then uh, next one is, uh, this is another uh, point of our uh, uh, second unit, that is types of transaction and settlement dates. Types of transaction and settlement dates. Now what it is? Now settlement dates, or uh, it is also known as value date. Please uh, do remember this. Uh, what what does it mean settlement date it is the day on which transfers are effected whenever we transfer one currency from other location okay now from india if you are transferring to thailand or maybe in uh, japan so suppose if you are done transfer today so that is known as settlement date so today is uh, 11th uh, Say Feb, today is 11 Feb, no? Yes, it is 11 Feb. So 11 Feb is a settlement date because today we are done transfer. Now, what is this set, uh, settlement location? The relevant countries. Now, here I have given the example of uh, Japan. So Japan and India, these are the settlement location. Japan and India are the settlement location. Now, dealing location is what? The location of two banks involved in the trade. Now, suppose, uh, if myself, I'm doing from India, so I'm uh, doing my transition through Reserve Bank of India or say State Bank of India. So it is one bank involved and in Japan, suppose if Japan bank, say, let's say, take example of say City Bank of Japan. If it, this is the bank of uh, Japan, so City Bank and State Bank of India, they are called as a dealing locations. They are what? They are known as dealing location. So did you understand settlement date, settlement location and dealing location? What is settlement location and what is dealing location? Dealing location which speaks about bank and settlement location which speaks about country. Settlement location which speaks about country and dealing location which speaks about bank. Understood? Yes, sir. Fine. Now, this slide speaks about the method of quotation. Now, how the quotations are being offered in spot market, eh? particularly for spot market. So the method of quotation for interbank dollar trades, uh, they follow American term. This is American term. Now, example is, and our dollar sign is there, public euro. So this is American term. Vice versa, if you're talking about European term, so first Euro will uh, appear and afterwards a dollar in European term. Uh, this is the way easy, easy way to remember. In American term, if you're asked uh, how American term is expressed, so just uh, mention first uh, dollar, oblique Euro. And if you're asked how uh, European term is expressed, 
यूरोपियन टर्म इमीजिएटली यू रिमेम्बर यूरो फर्स्ट यू मेन्शन यूरो ऑब्लिक डॉलर समझ लगा इजी वे टू रिमेम्बर पद्धति ने लक्षा नाउ सेटलमेंट डेट फॉर स्पॉट मार्केट इट इज टू बिजनेस डेज प्लीज रिमेम्बर दिस टू बिजनेस डेज ना जिस तुम्हारा एक्साम्पल दिला इफ यू आर डूंगशन लेट इवनिंग ऑन द फ्राइडे सो लेट इवनिंग फ्राइडे सो इमीजिएटली नेक्स्ट डे इज सैटर्डे and i told you saturday sunday that uh, this market is uh, closed so it will appear on the monday but if it is in business days business days like say monday so if you are done transaction on monday so it will be completed on monday uh, tuesday it will be done on uh, wednesday and if you are done transaction on tuesday and then which day it will be completed it will be completed on thursday two business days it uh, requires two business days remember business days two business days then for non bank customers non bank customers like you and me uh, we are called as a non bank customers so there there are two type of direct quote and indirect quote now what is direct quote direct quote gives the home currency price of one unit of foreign currency manje aplya samjha bharataacha ji currency hai apan rupaya aplya bharataacha currency rupaya tar rupaya cha apan dollar madhe deto tela direct direct currency ata 75 aaj cha rate jo ahe 75 rupaye 34 paise manje 1 dollar public he je dollar unni is one बरबर है ना आज का रेट सेवेंटी फाइव रुपीज है ना आज का वॉट इज द डॉलर रेट टूडे एनी वन हेज ऑब्जर्व टूडे डॉलर रेट हेलो हिपन जरा अपडेट जा एटलीस्ट डॉलर एंड पाउंड एंड यूरो तीन ज्यादा करंसी है विथ इंडियन रुपी वॉट इज द एक्सचेंज रेट ते जरा रोज पेपर मध्य ऑब्जर्व कर जा इट इज अवेलेबल ऑन इवन नेट ऑल्सो डायरेक्ट कोट इन डायरेक्ट कोट इट इज वेन फॉरेन करंसी प्राइस ऑफ वन यूनिट उलट आता अपन जर का कन्वर्ट के नेट वरती अवेलेबल है कन्वर्ट के डॉलर पॉइंट Zero one three two seven as to one rupee. So this is known as indirect quote. But generally, I mean, have direct quote is considered. But when you visit, say, America, so America gives the foreign currency price of one unit of home currency. So here they have to do this. But generally, direct quote, I mean, consider. कि आज एक डॉलर ला कि पैसे दया लगे तो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बाय वन डॉलर यू हॉव टू शेल आउट सेवेंटी फाइव रुपीज देन ओनली यू विल गेट वन डॉलर सो दैट वे ना कैन यू सी माय पीपीटी यस कैन यू सी माय पीपीटी यस सर ना दिस पीपीटी टॉक अबाउट ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट ना व्हाट इज दिस ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट ना basically there are uh, three words bid bid ask and spread now bid ask spread used to calculate the fee charged by the bank now when you how, how it is that how much fees is charged by bank that is known as our transaction cost je jeva apan when we uh, buy foreign currency and uh, in turn the, uh, we pay our home currency so the bank charges us so that is known as a transaction cost now what is bid bid equals to the price at which the bank bank is willing to buy that is bid from the examination point of view please uh, do remember this bid means the price at which the bank is willing to buy when a bank buy 
currency that is known as bid as means the price at which the price it will sell the currency means the bank will sell the currency jeva bank buy karte manje purchase karte that is bid ani jeva bank vikte that is ask so remember the difference between bid and ask when bank buys it is bid and when bank sell foreign currency it is ask so bid and ask this way the transaction gets completed now the next one is uh, the spot market in spot market percentage spread formula to kasa vaparatat baka percentage spread ps stand for percentage <coughs> spread formula equals to ask minus bid one second as minus b upon as multiplied by 100 and we know what is ask ask means what is ask it is the price at which the currency is being sold and b it is the price at which it is purchased आता हेच एक्झाम्पल घ्या बघा फॉर्टी रुपीज फिफ्टी पैसे सपोज आपण हे जर घेतलं तर फॉर्टी रुपीज फिफ्टी पैसे दिस इज अवर आस्क अँड बीड इज फॉर्टी वन तो डिफरन्स असं याचा डिफरन्स आला पॉइंट फिफ्टी डिवायडेड बाय बीड दॅट इज फॉर्टी वन रुपीज मल्टीप्लाय बाय हंड्रेड तर याचा स्प्रेड जो डिफरन्स आहे तो कॅल्क्युलेट जर केला तर इट इज कमिंग वन पॉईंट टू नाईन Two one nine five percent. So this way, the spread formula can be calculated. Please remember the formula that is ask price minus bid price upon ask price multiplied by hundred. And uh, we have taken some this factual factual figures also in order to understand. So this way, we can calculate the percentage. spread so today we have discussed the structure of foreign exchange market then we also discuss the types of transaction and settlement dates and, sir uh, one question yes yes forex madhe invest kar mhanje kele pahije ki nahi kele pahije ani कितपत रिस्क असते त्यामध्ये याच्यात रिस्क तर आहे म्हणजे कारण फॉरेन फॉरेक्स मध्ये व्होलॅटिलिटी खूप आहे म्हणजे खूप चढ उतार असतात मार्केट मध्ये प्रचंड चढ उतार असतात त्यामुळे समजा आज तुम्ही जो काही डॉलर घेतलेला आहे समजा एक आपण डॉलर हे जर करन्सी जर का विचार केला तर मे बी तीन महिन्यानंतर तो वाढलंच याची गॅरंटी नाही आहे त्यामुळे ही रिस्क आहे पण तरी सुद्धा लोक इन्व्हेस्ट म्हणजे फॉरेक्स मध्ये न करता तिथल्या कमॉडिटी मध्ये जर तुम्ही इन्व्हेस्टमेंट केली त्यांच्या प्रॉडक्ट मध्ये जर इन्व्हेस्टमेंट केली तर तिथून आपल्याला निश्चितच म्हणजे फायदा मिळू शकतो करन्सी मध्ये फायदा म्हणजे हा थोडासा स्पेक्युलेशन आहे खूप म्हणजे रिस्की आहे ते करन्सी मध्ये जर तुम्हाला पर्टिक्युलरली करायचं असेल तर करन्सी मध्ये आणि सर त्यामध्ये ऑटोमेशनची पण प्रोसेस असते ना आहे ना ऑटोमेशन पण आहे तुम्ही म्हणजे तुमचा लॉस स्टॉप करू शकता ऑटोमेशन आहे त्याला ते जर तुम्ही टूल वापरले तर आपला आपण लॉस आपण कंट्रोल करू शकतो थांबू शकतो येस दॅट प्रोसेस फॅसिटी इज देअर आहे त्याचं ओके सर ओके नाव नाव वी आर ॲट द एंड ऑफ सेशन इन इट आउट सो फार आता आपण जे जे काही कव्हर केलं त्याच्यामध्ये काही तुम्हाला अजून काही विचारायचं आहे
क्या विचारा है अपने Okay then thank you all good night we'll meet thank you the, sir we'll meet in the next session thank you